Hi everyone, my name is Paula Peralta, celebrity hairstylist and artistic director for Paul Mitchell. From the beginning of my career, I've had the opportunity to travel the world with some of the icons in our industry. And every stage and every city that I go in, I notice that there are hairdressers that are working so hard, you might not even know about them. They are experts in their fields and masters at their craft. What we're doing with this series is we are bringing all of their tips, tricks, and techniques to you to make you an even better hairdresser. This is Specialist Spotlight. This episode, Regine breaks down all of the information you need to be a specialist with chemical relaxers. This virgin relaxer application is incredible and I'm so excited for you to see it. So stay tuned. All right, Regine. So we are starting off with a full head virgin chemical relaxer, which I am delighted to see your beautiful hands moving through. Talk to me about how important a systematic approach is to this application. Once you start the chemical relaxing process, you really don't get to stop and go. So when you start, you have to know how am I starting? What quadrant am I starting in? Where am I ending? Okay, so as you go through, obviously, like you said, you've got about 13 to 15 minutes once you start a chemical relaxer. Um, Pretty much. Until that first quadrant is completely finished. So as you work through each section, how do you determine your section size? I see you're saturating top and bottom. What are maybe like your three tips for application, best practices, etc.? So I like to create an outline first in the segment that I'm working with. And I keep it about an inch to two inches away from the base because we know that the base will process quicker. So I start from about an inch to an inch and a half away from the base all the way to um, the porous ends. And then I start working my way, um, like maybe a quarter of an inch. It depends on the density of the guest. If they have like coarse hair or medium hair, um, I'll take a quarter of an inch, sometimes a little bit larger. And I'm making sure that I'm careful not to place that product directly to the scalp because I do not want to cause any chemical discomfort at the scalp. One of the key components that you just mentioned is using the relaxer and making making sure you're applying it on the base, but not necessarily on the scalp. And applying to the scalp, but not on the scalp is a key component in protecting the guest and giving you as much time as possible through the service. The other thing you mentioned is the porous ends. What's the importance of going to the porous ends and not through the porous ends when doing a chemical relaxer? Okay, the importance with going to the porous ends and not through when you're initially starting the process of chemical relaxing is the fact that the ends of the hair is the oldest part of the hair. So it's susceptible to more damage, right? So if I go in and go through the end, it's going to over-process, causing chemical um, breakage in the hair. So what I do is I make sure that as I'm touching up the base, then I can pull the rest of the relaxer through to the end in order for the hair to process evenly and healthy. Realistically, when you do this process in the salon, about how long does it take you to do a full head version relaxer? To apply a full head virgin relaxer, I make sure that I'm completely set up for success. So I pile a lot of relaxer into my bowl, more than what I think I need. And generally it takes me about 20 minutes to do a full application because I have that hair um, ready to go. There's no stopping to detangle the hair. You're, you literally have to start and go. And so actually a really good piece of advice I would like to give a new learner would be practice this on a doll head with conditioner or cholesterol because your timing is key in all of it. You play how you practice. So knowing absolutely knowing exactly how long it takes you to do a quadrant, what sort of texture, what density you're working with, and also the prep that you mentioned is so, so key. Making sure that you're detangling the hair, but also being really gentle during that detangling process, yes. setting yourself up with your relaxer, towels, extra bowls, brushes, whatever it is, gloves that you think you're going to need for this service make sure you have plenty of it once you get started because you cannot stop once you begin this process. Absolutely. And also a piece of advice that I give to my guests is to make sure you don't manipulate your scalp too much. Scratching, simple padding because you don't want to manipulate the scalp in the case that the product does touch the scalp. It doesn't cause any chemical burns. Uh, okay, so once you have completed your application, I see you're addressing the hairline. Are there any key notes 
around the hairline when you're doing this service? I always adjust the hairline last because the hairline, um, you know, depending on whether your guest likes to pull a ponytail. So there's a lot of stress in that hairline area and it's a fragile area. So that's why I go into put the relaxer there last because it'll process pretty quickly and I want to, you know, to keep the hairline as healthy and as dense as possible. So once you've applied the chemical relaxer to all the quadrants, it's on the base and it's now through the ends, you're going in with the back of your comb and you are manipulating. Talk to us a little bit about manipulating the hair. What sort of result are you looking for? How do you know when to stop and go to take your guests to the wash house? Okay, using the back of my comb, I'm manipulating the base just to encourage um, the hair to stretch, but I'm not doing it too much in any particular section because I do want the end result to still have a bit of texture in there. If you come away from the sink and the hair is bone straight, that's actually an indication that the hair is over processed. So if you actually place your comb on any section of the hair at the base and you press it and you see a nice little indent, that's your indication that it is time the hair is processed well and you can go into the shampoo bowl and do the wash house journey. As we approach the wash house journey, what is the journey overarchingly? And then also what are three key tips to this process to make sure that your relaxer has a beautiful end result? Okay, so the journey is taking the hair from one side of the pH scale alkaline back to the side of the pH scale where hair and skin lives in the acid side, right? So what I'm doing first is making sure that I thoroughly rinse the chemical out of the hair. Then I want to go in with my clarifying shampoo, making sure that I remove any excess product out of the hair and cleanse the scalp. So one of the things that I would love for you to talk about is water temperature and that initial rinsing of the chemical relaxer. What are some key things that I'm looking for and best practices for the beginning of this process? So for the water temperature, I don't want anything too cold, anything too hot. So keeping it right there in the middle um, and I am pressing the nozzle in because the product is a thick consistency. So I'm, I want to make sure that I remove it as much as possible. And also the key part to avoid any breakage in the nape area is lifting the guest's hair up when you're placing your shampoos and you're intentionally shampooing the nape area, the sideburn areas to make sure that there's no product left over. I love that. And the key word there is to be intentional with every step of this journey. And one of the things that you'll notice if you've worked with a relaxer before or if you're even brand new to this process is it is a thick creamy consistency you'll notice in the water that initially when you start rinsing the water will have a creamy consistency and then it'll have almost this iridescent quality keep rinsing yeah. until that water is completely clear, clear. and yeah. then you can begin your shampoo process that's right absolutely after my shampoo too that's when i want to go in and place a bit of protein back into the hair to build the hair back Back up. So I use the Aopuu Wild Ginger Keratin Intensive Treatment. After I let that sit for maybe about five minutes, then I can go back in with my moisturizing shampoo and I will follow that up with a conditioning shampoo that is intense um, moisturizer or I can use the Lavender Mint um, um, Mask. So any conditioner um, within our systems that is geared towards moisture, that's what I would use and sit my guests under the dryer for about 10 to 15 minutes to make sure that the moisture um, penetrates deep into the cortex. And one of the things that I love so much about this is it is an actual journey, as you just outlined. We have mm -hmm. taken the hair so high to that alkaline side. So the cuticle is completely open. The relaxer has pen penetrated the cortex of the hair. And with, with this process of the journey, we are slowly changing that pH so that we're preserving cuticle layers. But before that, we're putting the protein back into the hair. We're putting the moisture back into the hair. We're sealing down that cuticle to make sure that the, hell, the hair is healthy, that it's rebuilt, and that it's going to look gorgeous long-term after the service. Absolutely.
So one thing that you'll notice after this relaxer service is that Regine goes in with two products. The first one being the Tea Tree Lavender Mint Leave-In Conditioning Spray, and then following up with the Clean Beauty Heat Styling Spray. These are two components that are so key when you're styling post relaxer. The first is gonna give you a ton of moisture, and then the second is going to give you thermal protection, which are both gonna be important in that maintenance of integrity of the hair long-term. All right, so Regine, now that you've set the hair up, obviously with this incredible product with the Tea Tree Lavender Mint Leave-In Conditioning Spray, as well as the Clean Beauty Heat Styling Spray, um, I noticed you're going in with the 427 and your blow dryer. Is there a reason that you would choose a paddle brush over say a round brush or even like a 407 styling brush? Yeah, I would always go in with a paddle brush as opposed to a round brush or even my 407 brush because I just want less tension on the hair. Okay. So I know that there's a lot of misconceptions about chemical relaxers and a lot of hairdressers have some fears around it. Um, mm -hmm. And I think what's really cool about what we're seeing your hands do and the systematic approach you're taking to this is that it really isn't something to be afraid of. You just need a Absolutely system not. and you can be really successful with the service every time. Yeah, there's no fear behind it. Once you understand what you're doing, once you've game planned your beginning to your ending, it's absolutely something that you just start doing by muscle memory. So eliminate the fear, get the understanding that you need and just move forward with the process, trusting that every process is designed to set you up for success and keep the hair as healthy as possible. Is there a situation where a guest may not be a candidate for a chemical relaxer? And if so, how do you handle that conversation in the salon? Absolutely there. If a guest wants to play with color, like high lifts, lightener, um, that's the scenario where I would not advise or I would not perform the service of a chemical relaxer. So the general rule is color or relax, not both. So traditionally, people use super skinny serum on wet hair. I've been successful behind the chair using super skinny on dry hair. I really love that the super skinny complex go around to hug the hair and to fight humidity. And the Al Bui Wild Ginger Styling Treatment Oil goes in to nourish the hair with moisture. And it really allows me to get that really beautiful, silky, shiny finish that I'm looking for. Also, the guest has a lot of movement with their hair. When applying your super skinny or your styling treatment oil, measure how much product you're using. You never want to use too much or be heavy handed so that you um, weigh the hair down. Okay, yes, so initially I put in my serum and my oil and I smooth the hair out. That gives me an opportunity to go in and do refinement on a haircut or a trim if needed. Then after that, I will drop my heat to about half of what it originally was. And using my freeze and shine, it allows me to put some under bevel curls, add body to the hair, feather the hair out. And as you can see, the finish is bouncy, beautiful. It has a bit of hold, but you definitely see movement in the hair. So when you're beginning this smoothing process, how do you choose the temperature of your iron? So when I choose the initial setting for heat, it just depends on the texture of the hair. The finer the hair, the less heat I'm going to use. The coarser the hair, the more heat I can use. Um, so she has more of a medium texture. So I use anywhere between 375 to 390. Whenever I'm going back in to style the hair, with my freeze and shine, I'm going to drop that heat to about half of what it was. Regine, as always, your hands are spot on. Your dialogue is beautiful. And I am so thrilled to be releasing this information into the world. Thank you for sharing your expertise with us. Thank you so much for having me, Paula. It's my absolute pleasure to be able to share all this information.